Oftentimes, friend, what you have in your hands always and almost always feels inadequate to meet the need of that thing that you're trying to solve or that breakthrough that you're looking for. Today, I want to talk to you about a topic that was dropped in my heart and the topic is called, what do you have? What do you have in your hands? What do you have at home? What do you have in your bank account? What do you have around you? What do you have in your circle? What do you have at work? What do you have as children? What do you have as family? What do you have as friends? What do you have? I always like making my tour story references to the Bible because the Bible gives me a background and a backbone of amazing things that we can learn from, whether it's difficult times, good things, bad times, there's amazing stories we can learn from. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. A story is told of a widow. The chapter begins with the widow crying and saying that her husband has just died. She had suffered loss and she was so afraid that her sons would be taken as servants because the, the husband owed quite a lot of people a lot of money. So the prophet Elisha asked her, what, so what shall I do for you, maid servant? So what do you have at your house? And this is the question that changed her life forever. Yet she answered, your maid servant has nothing but a jar of oil. That's on 2 Kings 4 to be. Initially she said, I have nothing. Later on added, but a jar of oil. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? Maybe she felt that what she had was inadequate. Or maybe she felt that what she had, if she mentioned it to the prophet, she would probably lose everything that she has. She wanted to hold on to that one thing that she had left, right? Like the widow, how many times do we often discount what we have left? Maybe because we are afraid of losing it. Or maybe because we don't realize the power that's in what we have. Most of us have experienced crazy losses during this COVID-19. We've lost husbands, we've lost those we love, we've lost wives, we've lost children, we've lost jobs, we've lost businesses. But I'm sure we have something that we can use to start again and take that leap of faith and go for it. Do we have skills? Do we have hobbies? We must have something. And all I'm asking you right now is, what do you have? 2 Kings 4 to 3, the prophet says to the woman, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. And there is an amazing lesson to learn here. If this woman was probably like myself, the women, the strong women nowadays, whom we feel, oh my gosh, I can't be comfortable going to ask or going to borrow. Would you have had the courage to go and borrow empty vessels from your friends? This woman had the courage and she felt what the prophet has said was something that she was going to do. So she went and borrowed the empty jars and the empty vessels. And so the lesson here is that we have got to be taking action with what we have and if what we have is not sufficient, we must not be afraid to seek help. So you may have skills, you may have knowledge, you may have hobbies, you may have money, but sometimes you need to seek help. Reach out for mentorship, reach out for coaching, reach out for counseling, reach out for something. But what you need to do is to look at what you have and then take that step of faith and go for it and believe that that step is going to take you to where you need to be. So after the widow took the action that the prophet asked her to do, the next thing is that she brings those jars to the prophet and the prophet asked her to take a second action. And that action was for her to pour the oil in every single jar that was available that she had brought. Another le amazing lesson to learn is that the widow trusted what the prophet said to her. She did not doubt that well, I've only got a small jar and how is that small jar of oil going to feel? 
all these jars that you've asked me to go and get. She just took that action, went and filled the jars until they were all finished and she could find no more. Another point I wanted to bring here as well is that, so that means that if this woman had had even more jars and she had collected even more jars, she would have been able to still have enough oil to fill them. Imagine the power of what you have. So what you have right now means that you are only the person who is going to limit yourself in terms of what you can do and what you can achieve with what you have. So don't limit yourself. Look at what you have, trust the process, and take that action, take that leap of faith, no matter what it is, no matter what you have lost, it doesn't matter. Take that leap of faith and go for it. The next thing is that the woman goes back to the prophet and gives the prophet a report of what she had done. And she told the prophet and the prophet said, well done, now go and pay off all your debts and make sure that you've paid everything off and then if anything left, you can leave off it. And there is an amazing lesson here that how many times do we have an opportunity to work with what we have, to use what we, what we have, and when we have achieved those goals and when we've achieved those things, we forget to make sure that we pay the debts, we pay what is due to whoever has supported us and make sure that what we've got left, we invest, and then we leave off it and then we continue to grow. So please don't make the mistake of forgetting to pay off your debts. The mistake of forgetting to go back to your mentor, to your support system, to those people around you, to your coach, and keep accountability. And then when you do that, you are going to continue to get the direction and support that you need. The last lesson here that I see is that this woman, her life was never the same again because the prophet also told her to go and sell. That means that she was ushered into a business space that she would have never dreamt or imagined. She was ushered into entrepreneurship, into hustling, into learning to work with what you have. She was taken from a place of dependency syndrome where she had she had probably been able to depend on her husband because she had that husband around but this time the prophet helped her to see what was possible with what she had not focusing on the loss and on the death of her husband not focusing on the debt that she was drowning in not focusing on the challenges that she had that she was going to lose her sons but the prophet directs her into a place of action, into a place of entrepreneurship, into a place of trust, and into a place of believing, and into a place of tapping into whatever she had. And from that day on, this woman, I believe, she continued to sell the oil and to excel. Finally, when she did that, I want to reiterate, she did not go and buy the latest car. She did not go and buy the latest hair, the latest clothes. She did not show off, but rather she was accountable and responsible. And she paid off her debts and she continued to sell. So that's the word that I'm leaving with you, that take what you have. And when you've taken it and have taken action, Remember to take the right options and make sure you invest, make sure you pay your debts, make sure you continue to sell, make sure you stay accountable and make sure you continue to grow. Till next time, that's all from me now. Bye-bye.